arremetiendo contra nosotros. Como te das cuenta, mira, no tenemos nada, no tenemos nada, aquí no hay nada. Venezuela's meltdown has gone on for years, but never before have so many lives been lost. No me importa lo que pasó, cómo pasó, quién lo hizo. El asunto es que mi hijo no está. It used to be South America's richest country. Now, people are starving. ¿Cómo pudo haber una clase política tan criminal que destruyera su propio país? Before its leader is someone else's fault. Venezuela si hay gobierno digno y aquí estamos de pie. Saca tus manos de aquí, Donald Trump. Welcome to Caracas, where misery and mayhem are the new norm. A daily occurrence in the Venezuelan capital, Caracas. Thousands of people protesting against the rule of President Nicolás Maduro. Improvised shields against armed vehicles. Armando Cañizales was one of the protesters. An 18-year-old student and a viola player with a national youth orchestra. Quería una Venezuela mejor. Quería una Venezuela donde él pudiera ser libre, donde él pudiera jugar en paz, donde pudiera estudiar, donde pudiera llevar su instrumento por el metro de Caracas o por la camionetica, donde como él se transportaba sin que tener miedo a que a nadie le ro lo robara, donde no era mamá, como a mi mamá, no tengo tal medicina o cual medicina, donde no hubiera problemas para adquirir los alimentos. But his dreams ended here. Armando was shot dead all fighting for them. Esto es por lo que están y por los que se fueron, por los que se quedaron, lucharon y murieron, por los que se mantienen con el corazón sincero porque saben que los cambios vienen del pueblo primero. Caracas, a city with three million people and the highest crime rate in the world. It's become the symbol of people's intense anger with President Nicolás Maduro. For three years now, they've staged demonstrations to demand his resignation and are not planning to stop. This is what brought people out onto the streets. Venezuela has run out of virtually everything. Basic living items such as toilet paper, toothpaste, are now a rarity. Water and energy cuts are almost daily occurrences. People can't find food, such as flour, sugar, and rice. As a result, Venezuelans lost an average of eight kilos over the past year. They call it the Maduro diet. Hospitals operate without disinfectants, gloves, or antibiotics. Those who are supposed to save lives in Venezuela now say theirs is an impossible task. Tenemos el hospital sin agua, sin luz, los, la emergencia sin aire acondicionado. No hay ni yesos, lo, la, el tomógrafo no sirve, la máquina para hacer rayos X tampoco sirve. Cada vez estamos más nefastos y la gente está, o sea, ya no tenemos miedo. Ya queremos que alguien nos conteste, no queremos más muertos. Venezuela has been failing the sick for a long time. One year ago, when we smuggled a camera inside a public hospital in Caracas, what we saw was appalling. In the emergency room, patients had to bring their own blankets and food. Only one elevator worked, and it transported everything. Pregnant women and their newborns, dead bodies, and even garbage. Today, people tell us things have only gotten worse. Nicolás Maduro says he is not responsible for the decline of the country he has governed for four years. Contra la agresión de Donald Trump. Para que compiten contra Venezuela desde Miami. Es que se ha dado la orden desde Washington de cero diálogo en Venezuela. Someterse a los intereses imperiales del Pentágono. For now, Maduro is refusing to resign, saying it's his way or war, which is already how his administration has been treating the turmoil. The communication minister showed us what the government calls the war room, an office where all the deaths related to the political crisis are investigated. 
Este fue el primer mm. fallecido mm. en abril, a comienzos de abril, ¿verdad? Sí. Cuando se determinó por la experticia balística que había sido él el que disparó. Está preso por el gobierno de Maduro. O sea, Maduro lo hizo preso, ordenó meterlo preso. Armando Cañizales' death is also being investigated. Authorities believe he was shot by fellow protesters, something the opposition has denied. But for Armando's family, it doesn't matter. No me importa lo que pasó, cómo pasó, quién lo hizo. El asunto es que mi hijo no está, okay? Nadie me lo va a devolver. Armando had just been accepted to Venezuela's Central University. He wanted to be a doctor, but instead became the symbol of a generation of Venezuelans who are running out of hope. ¿Qué espero yo? No sé qué pensar. De verdad, respecto, no cayendo mucho a la situación, está muy, tengo muy nublada la parte de lo que es situación de mi futuro. Like Armando Melvix also wants things to change. He often attends anti-government protests and has had to skip class. Teachers haven't been showing up for work either. A veces no vienen, como comentaste. A veces cuando no tenemos clases, lo que hacen es que se manejan por vía web. Entonces nos mandan guías, una que otra clase, y nos manejamos por ahí y vamos estudiando. Months of protests have brought the university to a standstill. But Venezuela's education sector has been suffering for much longer. El mismo dinero eh, mensual se nos asigna desde hace por 20 10 años. Con una inflación galopante como vivimos en el país, cada vez lógicamente ese dinero eh, pues alcanza para, uh, para menos. La Escuela de Antropología recibe lo que sería el equivalente de unos 24.26 dólares al año para 2016, 22.27 dólares al año para el estimado para el 2017. Economic depression has crippled Venezuela for more than three years. According to the International Monetary Fund, GDP contracted 10% last year, and inflation surpassed 800%. Venezuelans had already been struggling with crippling shortages of food and medicine. And over the past few months, several gas stations ran out of petrol. So people here found themselves queuing for the only thing Venezuela was supposed to have left, fuel. The country with the world's largest oil reserves can no longer satisfy its own demand and is said to be importing 100,000 barrels a day of gasoline. Oil has been both Venezuela's blessing and curse. It is the platform on which everything in the country was built. The oil industry has powered the economy, financed governments and revolutions, including the one by Hugo Chavez. By nationalizing the country's oil company, PDVSA, Chavez financed social programs and food subsidies, which cost billions of dollars. During Chavez's and Maduro's years, the price of oil reached historic highs, but then it plunged and things got complicated. Victor Poleo worked as Hugo Chavez's deputy energy minister for two years. He says he decided to quit because of the socialist regime's oil policy, which he knew was doomed to fail. La explicación es política por cuanto no hay razones lógicas, racionales, para que una nación que pudo construirse durante buena parte del siglo pasado, el sector petrolero y eléctrico en particular, que son industrias centenarias de 100 años, uh, esté ahora destruido. But it is destroyed. The oil-dependent economy is now very close to collapse. For many, only a miracle can save Venezuela. People are holding tight to the idea of something bigger to help them through the hard times. The Vatican has offered to mediate in the political crisis that has brought Venezuela to its knees. And the Pope asked for all sides to show restraint so that peace can prevail. But even the leader of this parish is feeling the strain. Como venezolano, me, me siento afectado porque siento que el poder adquisitivo del venezolano en general ha bajado muchísimo. Lo que antes podías comprar con cierto esfuerzo, hoy, así tengas tres, cuatro, cinco trabajos a la vez, no vas a poder adquirirlo. Y como sacerdote me duele muchísimo que 
se haya parcializado tanto la realidad social de, del país que estemos peleando los unos con los otros. At this rally called by the Venezuelan president, we found some of those who still believe and support him. Que no podemos dejar al presidente Nicolás Maduro solo, ya que tenemos que ayudarlo, porque tenemos que seguir el legado que nos dejó el comandante supremo Chávez. El presidente Nicolás Maduro está trabajando y fuerte. Lo que pasa es que hay muchísimas personas que no están permitiendo lo que él está haciendo, no están dejando que él esté trabajando como debe ser. Some mothers believe the future of their children still lies with the Bolivarian Revolution Nicolás Maduro embodies. Ayer él cumplió años y nosotros venimos de Puerto Cabello y nos quedamos aquí para que la derecha el, el, nuestro presidente tenía una concentración y estamos aquí, yo le hice su sueño hecho realidad. Ese es su regalo de cumpleaños. The crowds of government supporters are slimming down. According to recent polls, only two out of ten Venezuelans want Maduro to stay. But the president can still rely on a very important source of support, the armed forces. With tension mounting, the question is, for how long? Venezuelan security forces are stretched to the limits. They are being ordered to stand against their own people while they themselves face some of the problems that have brought protesters onto the streets. The President Maduro se fue mucho más lejos de lo que podía ir. Entonces, decir que las Fuerzas Armadas apoya en forma unánime esta locura de construir otro pacto social, no, eso, eso no, eso no es factible. But for now, soldiers continue to do as they're told, whatever the consequences. Armando Cañizales is now an inspiration to many who say they will continue his fight for a different Venezuela. Obviamente la vida, no, la vida de nosotros de un vuelco nunca va a ser lo mismo que antes. Pues quería un mundo feliz, un país feliz, un país, un país que nosotros le dijimos que siempre hubo, un país donde no hubiera odio, donde no, donde cupiéramos todo, okay, como tiene que ser. Venezuelans from both sides of the political divide all hope to see Armando's dream come true. Annelise Borges, TRT World, Caracas.